Hey, it's Evan uh, from Octane and Electrons. Um, today I'm going to show you this um, Conway battery tester. Um, it's a KW650, and um, they actually sent this to me for free to do a review video on. So, um, anyways, I'm going to tell you what I think of it and be pretty honest about it. Um, but it, it's pretty useful. I've had cheaper battery testers before, and this one's got some nice features. And it works well for cars and motorcycles, which is nice. So, anyways, I've got it... Um, out of the box here instructions have a carrying case for it um, here you can see some of the features um, anyways let me get this out of the way okay here's the unit itself and we have it like two and a half feet of wires with good quality alligator clips, so that's nice. USB cable, it will do some data logging and you can review data on the computer, which is cool. Um, so, you know, first impressions, it's actually pretty well built. It's got a nice case on it. And the buttons are nice and good engagement. Um, and the screen is actually what's really nice on it. I still have the cover on it, but the display is excellent for something like this. It's not just LEDs. It actually has like a, um, you know, like a, I don't know what type of screen it is, but a digital screen to display stuff. So that's nice. I was really impressed with the quality of the cables. Thick cable, integrated tie wrap, and really good quality um, alligator cables for the battery. I was impressed. So, anyways, that's what we get. Um, we're going to show you how this thing works um, on a couple things. I've got an old, um, this is like a 78 R100 BMW on the lift right now. Um, so, we'll show the motorcycle functions there. And then, I thought this would be kind of cool. I'll show you the, the um, car battery tests on my old Ford, which is a 6-volt positive ground system, but it'll still work fine there. Um, so yeah, we'll go over both of those. Let's set it up on the BMW first. You got to have it connected to a battery to power up. So let me set that up and then we'll go through it. All right, over here at the BMW. Um, so I have the uh, negative side already connected over there to the negative terminal. You can see that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and connect positive here. As I do, you'll see the screen come on. It'll kind of boot up. Um, okay, so... Here's our menu, um, and you just use the keys here to cycle through stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Sorry about that. I really need to get a tripod here, I'm trying to get a good display on the screen. Um, so you just have up and down, escape and enter, and then the waveform button. So it's pretty easy to to use here. So I'll show you the vehicle specific functions in a second, but let me go over to waveform and hit enter. So right now it's charging battery voltage, um, showing you minimum, maximum voltage, as well as the current voltage. Um, and then if I had it running and increasing the RPM and all, you'd see it moving the plot around. So we'll show you that in a minute. Let me go back. So review, I haven't played with the data collection features yet, but this will let you if you save data, which I have not figured out how to do yet, you can review it here. Um, I believe this lets you transfer to the computer, but I haven't done this yet either. And your setup, just language test, change, turning the beep on and off, um, device tests, that kind of stuff. So I uh, don't need to mess with that. So for the moment, let's take a look at the motorcycle features. So I'm going to go to motorcycle, hit enter. It's going to ask you for what type of battery you're using. So this BMW has something similar. It's a 30 LBS chrome battery. Uh, these are more typical battery designations, but this should be pretty close. Okay, so there's its analysis of the battery at rest. Um, show you internal resistance, what type of battery, cold cranking amps for that type of battery, and current voltage. Um, so that you know that gives you a quick analysis of the motorcycle battery, which is nice. But what's really useful here is um, I'm going to hit the graph button here. 
switch to the waveform screen. So now I can actually monitor what's going on here. So I'm going to fire it up and then we'll increase the RPM and all and see if we can actually chart uh, the output of the charging system, which is pretty useful. So I'll go ahead and turn the key on. I'm going to try and do this without dropping everything. So let me get the bike running here. What's really cool is, see, we see the voltage drops uh, from both of the attempts there to start the motor. And we'll get our graph ongoing showing the uh, current voltage and our max and minimum. So we can see we dropped to eight and a half volts at cranking. And uh, so far we've hit a max of 13.1. So, let's see if I can pull this well to demonstrate. Sorry about that, I had to uh, come back to it, but you see, let me shut this off so you can hear all that. So here's what's interesting about this unit. I've had this happen multiple times. The screen will get corrupted sometimes, um, like when the voltage increases. Um, and you saw in just a second ago that just sitting there measuring it, the screen got corrupt and kind of was displaying sideways and the color changed. And <laughs> I don't know what causes that, but... Um, just disconnecting and, and reconnecting the terminal to recycle the unit will get it going again. I have this happen sometimes too where the screen color will change to red. So I don't know what exactly causes that, but the reading is still accurate. It's just uh, some screen corruption sometimes. So I don't know what the deal is there. I will ask Conway about that and get their input um, and put it in the comments because it might be a, need an update or something. I don't, don't quite know. But here you can see um, I already had it running, the motor running when I reconnected it, but you can see the um, increases as I increase the throttle multiple times. So you can see the voltage increase to 13.8 and then back down to resting voltage again at idle. So right here is a troubleshooting tool um, trying to detect charging system problems on motorcycles especially, which I do all the time. This is really useful. So, you know, so far this is my um, favorite function of the unit. The battery test is nice because it's not just basing battery health on voltage. Um, it's actually measuring internal resistance and you're getting a lot more accurate uh, test of the battery health. So, you know, I'm impressed with that functionality, but the charging system waveform recording um, for the motorcycle function is really useful. Um, and let's just see, I'm going to set it here and cycle it one more time and see if I can get the display back to normal. So I would call this a bug, but it certainly doesn't really ruin my experience with the unit. Okay, disconnected, reconnected. Okay. Now it looks like we're back to normal. Yeah. So anyways, I'll get their input on that. Um, it is a little annoying when that happens, but it doesn't seem to really affect the functionality at all. Um, okay, so that, the motorcycle functionality is pretty simple. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use that same test on the car battery, but the car battery section has more functions and should be a little easier to film. So I'm going to set that up on the car and then we'll show you some more. Okay, let's do some uh, testing here on my old Ford. This is a, a 51 Ford Deluxe two-door with a 239 flathead V8. It's a six volt positive ground system, but we can still use this to do some useful tests. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it. Get the display coming out. Okay, let's take a look here. 
Okay, car. Select that. So for car, uh, it's kind of hard to read there. Let's see. Uh, the highlight's kind of making it difficult. Hang on. So in vehicle and out of vehicle for battery location. So let's look at, obviously it's in the vehicle, but I don't have any draws here on the battery. So we'll pretend it's out. I'm going to select that. It's going to ask you to select a type. Regular flooded, AGM flat plate, AGM spiral, gel, EFB. This is a flooded 6 volt. Select that. What standard uh, is the battery measured in? This is CCA cold cranking amps and 610. I believe that's about right. Let's see. Yep, 610. Okay, so you can adjust that so it knows what to expect. Under measurement. There we go. So, let's see if I can focus a little better. Good battery, showing the resistance, uh, your cranking amps, and uh, voltage. So, we could also switch to the waveform to monitor. Um, I don't have the motor running right now, but that works well. So, that's useful as well, so you can see what the charging system is doing. Um, the other features you have here for cars back to the main menu select car if we're in the top says in vehicle if we're in in vehicle test we have a battery test which is as far as i can tell basically the same as what we just went through on the um, the out of vehicle uh, function let's check it so it's telling you to check surface charge turn the lights on um and you hit enter it's gonna ask you the same info And then you can turn on the lights to draw some current out of it and probably get a little more accurate information. And let's go back and look at the other tests. Car, in vehicle. So cranking test. Turn off engine, press enter to test, and then start engine. So I've done this on this car. I think because it's a six volt battery, maybe it's not, and it's, this is an old, really old generator. Um, system so my assumption is you're not getting enough voltage increase at um, cranking speed for it to detect you're trying to start the motor and do the test so I'll show you I can't measure this too well let me see if I can set this up here okay so we're sitting there at start engine so you can see it doesn't register that anything happened um, I assume on a 12 volt battery it, it would because with a, a newer like alternator I'm sure you would be seeing a voltage increase at cranking so I can't really do much here with this car and charging test shows you a ripple so I'm assuming this is showing you basically much more accurate uh, voltage because it's showing you voltage ripple in millivolts so I can fire it up and show the charging so it's once you increase rpm to 2500 revs and keep it for five seconds so we'll see if it detects here so this is another do that one more time this is another bug I think I've noticed that I will ask Conway about. Um, you saw when we did, so I can get back to it. Yeah, it doesn't always display it. Sometimes it'll ask you to go through that test and it'll boot you right back to the select screen. And I'm not sure why that is, but it might be a bug in the software. So here it is again. I guess you have to be running for a minute. So we'll test and get you results, but it boots you back and I can't view them. So not sure there, but I will ask about it, see if I can find out more. Um, but in my mind, the, the um, let's get a good display here. Go to waveform. 
This is pretty useful functionality here. So I can display current voltage and then uh, so can get over here and So again, having that kind of diagnostic functionality uh, to store the waveform like that is really useful to be able to go back and see if you found. Let me shut the motor off. Got a uh, throw out bearing whining that makes some noise on this car. Yeah, so there we go. So anyways, it's, it's pretty useful for um, troubleshooting the charging system as well, which was not something I was I was really expecting, but I'm a big fan of that functionality. So anyways, um, that's about it for this thing. It's it's very reasonably priced, and it does have a few little quirks and, and bugs, but I'd say, you know, for a lot of troubleshooting, um, you have no need for an oscilloscope or something that's going to be really expensive and have way more functions that you need. Um, being able to use a tool like this is cheap and really useful to do most of the troubleshooting you need uh, on a charging system or battery. So anyways, that's it. Hope you liked it. And um, I'll try and do some other uh, equipment reviews uh, hopefully soon as well as actually get a camera and a tripod and all. All right. Thanks for watching.